Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to teach you just a few basic tips and tricks on how I like to mix color. I hope it'll really make things a little bit easier for you, and of course, help you mix color faster. Here are a few examples of different kinds of paintings. You see how different they are? All of these paintings were mixed using the same original colors, and I'll show you kind of how we get there without going too crazy. Before we get started though, let me show you the paints that I like to use. Now here are the oil paints that I use every time. You see it's our Gamblin paint set, and we just made that into a nice box set. Very convenient, comes with a little birch panel. You guys have probably seen this on other videos. You see I work with a very limited palette, and that's important for color mixing. I find it makes it so much easier than trying to work with, you know, 20 different colors. Also, I do recommend Gamblin paint. It's just, I've tried many, many different brands, and it's just my favorite. It works really well, and I know you'll have some success with it. All right, let me go ahead and get this palette set up now. Now that you've seen the oil paint that I like to use, let's start with the more basic color mixes. So I went ahead and grabbed my palette knife, very good for mixing. I've also got a three quarter brush. These are available on the website, as well as a whole bunch of other brushes. I also have some paper towels off to the side. So let's go ahead and begin mixing. We've got some really easy color mixes that I know everybody knows. Let's do, I'm just gonna start. Let's do 50% red and 50% of our yellow. Mix them together and you get that crazy orange, and I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> there we go. This way you can kind of see what you get when you mix things together. Let's do red and yellow ochre. Same amount, 50-50. It's a good place just to, I, this isn't a waste of paint either. Not in the least, because you are learning so much. So look at the difference. Look at that. See the difference side by side? Interesting, huh? This is almost a brown. Okay, that's cool. Another interesting color mix is red, 50% red, 50% sap green, and this gives you brown. I bet you guys knew that. There you go. Now, those are kind of some simple warm color mixes that you guys can use. It's just 50%. So mix all your colors together, you know, pick two and mix them together 50-50 and kind of see what you get. You wanna see a weird one? Here's some umber, 50% umber, 50% blue. Now, I'll show you what I like to do when I'm just trying to figure stuff out. Because you obviously can't see those colors too well, take some white and rub it in. So look, the umber and the blue give you kind of that charcoal soft blue-gray. It's really pretty. Let's see what this, how that brown turned out. Cool, huh? And then those are fairly easy. You can add white to them anyways. White is always a good, a good way to kind of see what color you have. See how we just experiment and learn? Cool, huh? So this is kind of, these are some very easy and simple color mixes that you can do. You notice we don't use a purple out of the tube. That's because we can mix it. Also, my palette. I knew that I like the green palette, but I knew it was gonna be kind of hard to see. So I went with a very nice clean white palette. And for me, this is spotless. <laughs> okay, 50% red, 50% blue. Mix those together. See how the knife mixes paint really easy. You can use the knife when you're actually painting. There, to mix, you know, stop and, and don't mix with the brush, mix with the knife if you want to make it really easy. And look at that beautiful purple we get. You see that? That's a good purple. There's no need to buy one out of the tube. Not when you have that. That's just 50 of our red and our blue. Cool. All right, I'm gonna clean this up and show you some more color mixes. We'll get a little bit more complicated now. Next, I'm gonna kind of show you a few of the potential little problem areas you might end up kind of falling into. And now would be a good time to mention though, that each different type of paint, even the same name of the color, just with a different brand, makes a little bit of difference. So you wanna make sure you're using the exact same paint as I'm using if you're trying to get the exact same color that I'm getting. It really does make a lot of difference. There are small changes with the different brands and big changes with the different colors. So one red is not necessarily the same as the next. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and mix up some more paint. Now, maybe one of the biggest problems is when people take a little black and blue, I pointed to the wrong colors as I said it, but you know what I mean, black and blue, 
and they mix them together, thinking they'll make a nice little stormy sky because there's, you know, black would help to darken the blue. Well, watch what happens when you add a little white to it. You see that greenish cast? See how it's kind of greenish? A little bit weird, huh? So that's not something you want to do. That doesn't work for this guy. So if you want to make a stormy sky, don't just go with blue and black. Take a little red and throw in with it, because that'll help. When you throw that red in, you can throw a little more blue in. There you go. That color's a lot better. It kind of eats up that potential green that we had in there. So that's problem number one. Another problem people may run into is when you're trying to mix up a green, well, okay, we do use green right out of the tube, and that stuff is great. That's sap green. But maybe you want to mix it on your own, and people do, and I do sometimes. A little bit of blue and a little bit of our yellow. That green right there is artificial, and you probably are not going to want to use that everywhere. You know where this would be really good, though? Is, with a little bit of white added to it, a seascape. Watch this. Imagine that right there, that pale kind of emerald green. There's your seascape green right there. Isn't that cool? But don't use that in the trees and stuff. That would make things look too artificial. For the trees, we use a sap green. Of course, mixed with other colors, but it looks good on its own. Let me show you what sap green looks like on its own. You see that? See how it's more of an earthy green uh, compared to that emerald green? You see the difference? There's your seascape green. And there's your tree green. There, just had to get that out of the way. People do it. Just wanted to make sure that you guys kind of are a little bit ahead when it comes to this. Let me show you how I mix some more, well, some more slightly complicated colors that we might use in, a, in an actual painting. So, I'll give you some good mixes. Here, for a base tone for the tree, I would use black, I'd use green, about 50-50, I would throw a touch of yellow, see how I throw a little bit of yellow in the mix, and I would throw a little bit of blue in the mix. Oh, umber too, always add umber. So that would be a good dark for your tree. You want to see what that looks like with white added? Kind of a greenish gray color. Interesting, huh? I like that. That would be great for a, an underpainting on the trees. For an evergreen, add a little more blue. See how that comes out? Just a little more to the blue-gray green side instead of just like grayish brown. Pretty cool. Now, a lot of times we want to paint sunlight. Sunlight's easy. That's yellow ochre right out of the tube with some white added to it. Mostly white. Find a clean spot on your palette to work. And that is why I'm using a white palette, so you can see the colors perfectly without anything interfering. Now, if you want to use a gray palette, that's great. A green palette, like I normally use, that's good too. There's your sunlight. Isn't that pretty? That's going to give you some wonderful, wonderful highlights. It gives you a really good idea of how to mix some of those colors. Now you notice in this painting here that I have on the easel, which is actually one that we painted together, there's a lot of variation in color all over the place. Now that can be done several ways. I want to show you the easiest way to do it. I'm going to teach you how to do a color stream. So I'm going to take our white and just kind of get it ready. Let's, well we could really do a color, oh purple, purple's good. I was going to say we could do it with anything, but purple would be great because there's so many variants that we can make. Plus we don't have any kind of purple on our palette. Red, blue. 50-50, you guys know how to do this. Now, watch this. That just looks black on the palette, right? So you take our white, and I set it somewhere right in the middle of the pile. Not a whole lot of paint here. And I rub it with my knife. You can do this with a brush, too. And I rub it, and I rub it, and then I drag it out like this. And then I add more white to the tip. You see that? To the tip of the pile. And you drag it out. So that you make a color stream. This is going to help your painting so much because look, you can, and I'm going to go right in here and mix this up a little more. So you can go for extreme light purple. You can slide down to mid-tone purple. You can slide down to dark purple, and then you have what looks like black. And you've got a zillion colors in between. So you have effectively mixed, you know, like 100 colors right here, ready to go. In three seconds, you just grab whatever one you need. Super valuable. You can do this with other colors too. You can do it with you know, mixing more red into the pile and then taking your white and then kind of making a color stream that mushes into the other color stream. So now you have, <laughs> this is crazy, you can get so carried away with color. So now you have a color stream with warm and cool. So now you have warm on this side, cool on this side and everything in between. Isn't that amazing? I'm thinking flowers. 
you want to paint a flower, you can just come in here and get all sorts of different colors. This is good stuff. It'll really help make things so easy for you. Now last, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tips. In fact, this is something that's helped me personally with my color mixing. So I went ahead and mixed together a couple of simple color streams. This is a bluish purple and our gray, kind of a brown gray. So, and I've got my brush now. So here it is, my biggest tip, the number one thing you can do. Well, maybe two things, but the, the first is most important. I'm painting, right? I'm doing whatever. This looks like water. I guess we're painting water. And okay, I'm doing my water and it's time to paint rocks. Well, I'm gonna take this color, I'm gonna throw it right on top of this. <laughs> uh oh, well here's the thing, look what it did. And it's super subtle, but this color is now tied in with this color. So when I go to paint my rocks, they have just the tiniest feeling of the water. Isn't that cool? So if this was an ocean, that would make a lot of sense. You know, waterfall, all that good stuff. Well, I'm done with that, I'm gonna paint some trees. I'm coming back now. I wanna mix up some sap green and black for a very simple base tone for the trees. And I'm gonna purposely incorporate all my colors by mixing right over the top. You see how that just added a little bit of flavor from the rest of the painting. And so I'm gonna paint my trees. I'm gonna wipe out my brush because I'm using it up, right? That's the idea. And I'm going to highlight my trees. Of course, I can't mix my highlight tone right into that, but what if I just mix next door? And oops, we got a little color in there. Isn't that cool? So this way, everything kind of fits together. And this is just the absolute number one thing you can do to make your paintings look professional. It's also way faster. The second little thing that I would mention, because I see this almost every time I work with somebody with color, you know, teaching them how to mix color. Number one thing is they do this. They have their colors all nice in little piles and nothing ever touches another one. And this is really slow and it's not the best way. Don't be afraid to just jump in there, grab random stuff, throw it together. If it doesn't work, let's mix everything together and see what we get. <laughs> there we go. You know what we're gonna get? We're gonna get a little mid-tone that we can throw in the rocks and make them look like moss. Isn't that cool? So you really are, you're free to mix color over color. Now, you can even do that. I'm gonna just pick a little, you obviously have to do it in moderation, but I'm gonna pick a little bit of color over here Take some red, take some blue. I'm gonna mix up a purple on top of this mess. And you know what I'm gonna get? I'm gonna get a nice softer grayish purple and it's gonna be beautiful. And that would work really well as little wildflowers in a painting. Isn't that nice? So that's how you kind of mix color on top of color. It won't make your painting muddy as long as you, as long as you don't put too much of the previous color in. That's a lot. So that's why I mixed it kind of on the side. And look how you can bring the two together and get zillions of color. Isn't that really cool? That's the way you kind of make your paintings feel a little more professional, tied together with color, and it makes your life so much easier. Well, now that you've learned these techniques on color mixing, as well as my favorite tip about mixing color on top of color, which should really help you during your next oil painting. Of course, if you need some full-length lessons on how to create individual paintings, be sure to visit our website. Also, don't forget to check out our brush line, as well as the oil paints. Thanks for watching.